All right. So uh, this is where uh, our actual uh, webinar starts from. Uh, whatever I explained before it was just the just the context of um, you know the uh, the project cost control and earn value management. So what happens here is once your project have been approved and you created the uh, project charter, you develop the um, uh, uh, stakeholder register. Then we move on and you will prepare something called a scope statement. Then you prepare something called as work breakdown structure. Then you have work breakdown structure dictionary. Then you might have the list of activities. And from the list of activities, you start the estimation. Okay. Now, once you complete the cost estimation, okay, once the cost estimation is completed, okay, once the cost estimation is completed, all right, once we know how much the resources are going to cost to complete the activities and in turn complete the project, we are now ready to prepare the project budget. Okay, but one thing you need to know to prepare the project budget, we need to have the project schedule also ready with us. Okay. Now, let me just quickly go through this definition of what is a determined budget. Determined budget is the process of aggregating the estimated cost of individual activities or work package to establish an authorized cost baseline. So what they what they're trying to say is this, for example, let me let me show this pictorially. Okay, let me show this pictorially. For example, once we have the scope statement, once we have the scope statement, we create something called WBS and WBS goes like this, your project title here. And below the project title, you have something called as um, level. This is level one. This is level two, which could be, uh, let's say, uh, site preparation. This could be substructure. This could be superstructure. And this could be, let's say, finishing. Now, in site preparation, let's say you might have um, uh, fencing. You might have site office uh, or site clearing. You might have uh, site office. Okay. You might have uh, uh, mobilization and so on. Okay, so what we do in WBS is we break down the project from the top level to the lower level. The more detail we go down, the more clarity we will get about the scope of the project. Okay, and I'm not going to I'm not going to draw anymore. So let me say let me let me pick this particular uh, particular work package called site office and bring it here. Okay, so I have this uh, work package called site office. Right now. The WBS will not define or it will not explain the scope of uh, the site office. It will only name the deliverable, which is site office. And that's why we need to prepare an additional document called WBS dictionary. Now, WBS dictionary will have the detail of uh, the site office, like how big it should be, how many rooms it should have, and so on. Okay. Now, what we will do. Uh, in a particular process called define activity is we break down the site office into activities like activity A, B, C, D, E, F, and so on. Okay. Now this is called, this is called activity list. Okay. This is called activity list. Okay. Likewise, each of the work package will have activity list. Okay. Once we have the list of activities, that's when the estimation starts. That's when the estimation starts. Okay, now when we talk about estimations, uh, the first thing we can do is we can do the uh, resource estimation. Okay, meaning what resources we need to perform each of this activity. Okay, those resources includes men, machine, materials, and so on, right? Now, once we have the list of resources we need to perform this activity, we will then do the cost estimation. How much these resources will cost me? Okay, then what basically we are going to do in the determined budget is we are going to, as you could imagine, if this is going to cost me ten thousand dollars, this is going to cost me one thousand, this is going to cost me two thousand, so on. What basically I'll do in determined budget is I sum it up. Let's say when I sum it up, it is thirteen thousand dollar, and I roll it up, assign thirteen thousand dollar to site office, right? Now once I have the cost for the site office, which is thirteen thousand dollar, the same way I can assign and roll it up for each of the work package. Then I can roll it up to site office and say site office is going to cost me one uh, one million, substructure is going to cost me three million, super superstructure is going to cost me four million, finishing is going to cost me three million. Then what I'll do, I roll the, all them up to the total project cost. This process is called cost aggregation. This process is called cost aggregation, and that's what we do in budgeting. In budgeting, what we do after we complete the estimation, we do cost aggregation. 
Okay. The other thing, if you could see here, is which is which is sort of very very interesting and important. Uh, the output, the output of this process determined budget. Okay. If, if you see here, interestingly, the output of determined budget is not budget. It is something called as cost baseline. Okay. Now you need to understand what is cost baseline. Okay. Cost baseline will. I'll, I'll go back to that slide. Cost baseline will look something like this. Okay. Now, in one side, you have the cost. In the x-axis, you have the time. Now, if you see here, this particular curve here, this is the cost baseline curve. Okay. And some of you might be no cost baseline using the term S curve. Cost baseline is also known as S curve. Now, what you see here is it has two dimensions to it, right? One is the time, other one is the cost. Now, cost is something we can get it from the cost aggregation. Once you complete the cost aggregation, you should you should you should able to know how much the you know cost of the work package and how much is the cost of the project, right? But what else you need to know to prepare the cost baseline or S curve is also you need to have the schedule. Now, without the project schedule. Uh, it is not possible to prepare the S curve, right? And that is why, if you, if I go back and look look at one of the input, if you see one of the input here to prepare the cost baseline using cost aggregation is project schedule. Now, what the project schedule will do is it will help you to to connect the dots, right? For example, if this is a let's say if this is a six month project, and let's say this is the end of the first month, and this is the second month, and this is the third month, and so on. Okay. So how this curve gets developed is pretty simple. Now, if you look at the schedule, obviously you would know, obviously you would know what are all the activities you had scheduled from the start till here, isn't it? You would know what are all the activities you have scheduled. Now, all you have to do is do the cost aggregation, which is summing up the cost of those activity and make a point here. Okay, for example, for let's say for 16 activities scheduled from here to here, this is the total money you have estimated. So when you connect these two points, you'll get a dot here. Similarly, you'll get a dot here. Similarly, you get a dot. In this way, you will have something called as S curve. As you could see, S curve is a time phased view of the cost baseline, which is typically displayed in the form of the shape, which is S. Okay, let me go back. I would like to explain a few more concepts to you. All right, and I'm not going to talk about the rest of the tools and techniques. So basically, we need to have the uh, cost estimates. We need to have the uh, schedule. When we have these two, along with the cost aggregation, we can able to prepare cost baseline. Okay. All right. Okay, now this is one interesting concept. Let me explain this. Now I just explain project budget is a sum of all the cost, isn't it? But we also looking at something called as cost baseline. Okay, now he, this one will sort of explain the, 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 you know, the clarity between the, the difference between these two. So what happens is, let's say, let's say your project have, for, for a simple understanding purpose, your project have 10 work packages. Okay, your project has 10 work package. Now each of the 10 work package will have list of activities, work package number one, work package number two, work package number three, and so on, right? So each of these uh, work package have a list of activities. And we already estimated the cost of each of these activity. So what we'll do, we sum it up, <coughs> we'll sum it up right when we sum it up let's say I'm getting let's say for example $1,000 for this first work package okay for this first work package I'm getting $1,000 all right now if you could see here in addition to the cost estimates we are also adding something called as activity contingency reserve which means some of these activities what you're going to perform might have certain risks Okay, which you should identify in the risk register. Okay, if some of these activities have risks associated with that activity, then we might need to add contingency reserve. Okay, for example, uh, this particular activity have some risk and to manage the risk, let's say you need to have $100 extra. 
okay so now your cost for this particular work package is one thousand one hundred dollar understood so that's what we mean by activity based contingency reserve okay so similarly we do it for each of the work package 10 10 work packages then what we will do basically sum up all the work package cost isn't it when you sum up all the work package cost okay let's say it is coming up to four hundred thousand dollar okay and that's this value this particular value this value is four hundred thousand dollar now in addition to the four hundred thousand dollar you might add some contingency reserve again which are independent of any of your activity contingency reserve which means in other words these reserves is for the risks which are associated with any particular individual activities whereas this contingency reserve is the amount of money which are allocated which are not specific to any activity but which are all what we call as certain general risk for example rain or escalation it has nothing to do with any of the specific activity these are all general risks which you might face in your project okay so you might add some contingency reserve now once you add all the work package cost and contingency reserve you get something called as control account cost which is a level above work package okay now when you have all the control account costs you have something called as cost baseline okay you have something called as cost baseline okay now let's assume i'm adding ten thousand dollar as contingency reserve general contingency reserve then my cost baseline is four hundred and ten thousand dollar okay now here is the question then what is this called management reserve and why this is not called as at this point of time project budget why are we adding management reserve to call it as a project budget is this when you talk about risks in the project okay i'm not going to discuss in detail but very briefly there are two types of risks one is called known risks other one is called unknown risks okay known risks are those risks which you have identified and documented in the risk register okay to manage them you need contingency reserve unknown risks are unexpected risks which you haven't identified without because you haven't identified you have not you have not assigned any contingency reserve for it okay and you need for that management reserve which are normally normally arbitrary value for example five percentage of the budget is management reserve as an example okay now what you need to understand is as a project manager as a project what you will have is your cost based on only you will not have the management reserve because management reserve belongs to the management not to the project team so okay so the project manager the project team will work only with the cost baseline but the management should know that it's not possible to finish the project within the cost baseline because there could be a lot of unknowns which might affect the project which was not identified in the risk register so they do keep some reserve and they do release it when, when it's required okay so project budget includes management reserve <clears throat> the other way of explaining this is cost baseline is the project budget but excludes management reserve okay all right so uh, just I, uh, i'm just going through uh, i think i should do this because while I'm doing the explanations, I may not uh, look at the question and answer which you're posting because I have to go to a other place to see your questions uh, because I don't want to stop the flow. But what I think I should do is, uh, after me explaining the concept for about 15, 20 minutes, I should you know, take a, like a few seconds break, go to question and answer to see if there are any questions posted by any one of you. All right, it's okay. So one of the question posted by uh, Elisha, is uh, will you get the uh, presentation the presentation what i'm delivering would you get it the answer is yes uh, for those who attended this uh, webinar we are going to provide you the link to download this presentation slide in a pdf format okay so that should answer your question alicia okay uh, i'm just looking at another question asked by catherine could you please uh, take the last line again in budgeting? <laughs> Unfortunately, I missed it. So uh, I cannot go back to that. I, I, I don't know the context of uh, what it is, right? Okay, so anybody have any, any more question at this point of time? 
I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, fair enough. Let's uh, continue. All right, let me close this. Okay, um, so uh, so that's that's what this definition tries to say. The cost baseline is the approved version of the time phased project budget, but it does excludes the management reserve, which are for unknown risks. Okay, so the same stuff here. What I was trying to say. Okay, uh, this is something I already explained to you. Let me just. Move away from this slide. Okay. All right. Now this is the most important one. The, the, the uh, webinar is all about this, which is cost control. Okay. All right. So at this point of time, what do we have is the S curve, isn't it? We do have the yes curve or cost baseline where we got the time on one side and we got the cost on the other side and let's assume this is our s curve okay let's assume this is our s curve all right and this particular point here this particular point here where supposedly as per your plan your expense should stop your expenditure should stop okay so let's say this is let's say uh, this is um, hundred thousand dollar and let's say this is a three months project so this should be the end of the third month this is the uh, this is the uh, end of the second month and this is the end of the first month okay so uh, as, as a simple scenario this is a three months uh, project and you are budgeted uh, under thousand dollar okay now what we can call this particular point as right this point or this value is called BAC, which stands for budget at completion. Okay, which stands for budget at BAC. What you need to understand is, which I already explained to you, but let me reiterate it, which is. What others can someone type in the uh, question that you can uh, listen to me audio just to make sure others can listen to me I didn't press any wrong button here so uh, can can others uh, clearly Okay, so um, we need to blame the technology for it. <laughs> yeah, um, but I'm glad you know it is it is going okay. It's it's not that bad. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I, 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 as you know, you know, presentation combination of my technology, your technology, my internet speed, your internet speed, and so on. Anyways, let's continue. All right, so. This is the work, let me call this as the working budget or, or BAC, budgeted completion. All right, okay. What I'm trying to say is this. When you say I'm in cost control, I'm doing cost control, what that basically means is you had started the project, isn't it? You are somewhere in the timeline. You are somewhere in this timeline. You started the project and you are somewhere in this timeline, isn't it? Let's assume this is today, okay? Maybe 45th day or something, right? This is today. This day will be called as data date, uh, which typically means the date when you need to collect the data. 
right? Now, is it possible for us to know how much we had budgeted to spend as of today, right? So obviously we would know, right? So basically you need to connect the lines here. Then you would know this is the amount of money you had budgeted to spend as of today, isn't it? And this particular amount of money, what we're talking about here, is called planned value, PV. Okay, so the first one is BAC, that's the total you know, uh, budget towards the completion. The next one is planned value. So for this project, for example, the budget at completion could be under 1,000. The planned value could be, let's say, uh, roughly about uh, 50,000. Isn't it? There's under thousand dollar project here somewhere in the middle. So let's say fifty thousand dollars. Now, we don't get much more than these two information from your from your S curve. S curve could give you only the plan value and the budget completion, right? That's why if I go back and show this S curve again one more time to you, this particular line is your S curve. But if you see, there is one more line cropping up. This is your actual cost line. Which is your actual expenditure line okay let me go back here and let me just try to pick some other color okay but i'm not gonna fiddle it so i'm not getting it <laughs> leave, leave that one all right so so what happens is you might have another curve which could be starting somewhere, which could even start from here, depends on when you started the project. This is what your plan says, but you could have started from here. And anyway, let me start from here. Let's 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 let, let, let's say it goes like this and somewhere it stops here. Okay. Now this could be your actual cost. For example, the actual cost could be, let's say, um, let's say uh, 60,000. Okay. All right. So, thousand as of today i had planned to spend fifty thousand dollar but i had actually spent sixty thousand dollar okay read me point you're actually spending sixty thousand dollar right now here is the question now based on this scenario would you tell the performance if this project is good or bad i'm going to launch a poll now you can answer this question Now, based on this scenario, would you say the performance is good or bad? I'm going to give you 60 seconds to answer. I got like 20 seconds more. Think about it and you can answer. All right, so that's my one, one, uh, one minute. Let me end the poll. You can also see the uh, result. Let me share the result. Can you able to see the result? <laughs> right, so uh, if you could see the result, I got uh, one student who answered this correctly which 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 is basically not enough data right um some says good um i don't know why it is good uh, it is a wrong answer but a better wrong answer <laughs> within the wrong answer is a bad okay which is the bad answer all right so um i'm gonna i'm gonna stop this and close this and i'm gonna explain this uh, a little more so what this what happened here basically is uh, the plan says you're supposed to spend $50,000, but you had actually spent um, uh, $60,000. So uh, generally, a, a common man 
should say the performance is bad because you spent more than what you planned. Okay, so uh, at, okay in a normal sense, but that's not the correct answer anyway, right? Uh, why it is not the correct answer? Why you cannot say it is a good or bad performance is because what we don't know is the progress. Because what we don't know is the progress or in other words, the status in terms of how much work have you completed? Just hypothetically, just hypothetically, what if the project is completed over here? You have successfully completed the project, which is supposed to complete here. You completed right over here. I mean, I, I, I know you might be thinking that is extremely unlikely, but that is a possibility, right? So that the fourth piece of information, which is the critical piece of information uh, that we need to know before we decide the project is performing good or bad is the actual progress of the project. Without that, we cannot make the comparison. Okay, um, this is some theory about cost control. I'm going to skip this one. This is the process actually. You will have the inputs, tools and techniques and outputs to control cost. And one of the uh, tool and technique is earned value management. And that's what I'm going to talk today. How we can apply earned value management in the cost control. Okay, All right. So inputs, tools and techniques. I'm going to talk about each one of them in greater detail. So don't worry about it. Now let's look at this particular uh, scenario. Okay, now here look at this example you are going to construct compound wall let's say for a villa right you got you got a nice uh, little project where you're going to construct compound wall four sides for a villa and if you see the plan here it says you have to complete the work in four weeks and work is equally distributed okay and work is equally distributed which means each side you should take one one week. Okay. Well, technically, if you think about it, if you try to draw an S curve for it, it will not be S curve. It will be one linear line like this. Okay. So that's not the point here. The point here is um, each side you will take one week to complete. Okay. Each side you budgeted ten thousand dollar. Okay. Per per wall. So this is ten thousand dollar. Ten thousand. 10,000 and 10,000. Okay, which means as you could think of what will be your BAC? Okay, I'm sure you would have guessed it correctly, which is BAC equals to $40,000, isn't it? Because each side you budgeted 10,000, so four sides, 40,000. Okay, that's the information we can derive so far. Let, let, now let's look at the status. Status means the data date, the date in which you collected the data. And looks like the date is the end of week three. End of week three, which means three weeks has been completed. Okay. Now you tell me if three weeks are completed, what should be your planned value? It's quite simple, right? Each week you budgeted. Okay, this week one week. Each week you budgeted one side of the walls. There are four sides, right? So when you say I'm at the end of week three, which means you should have completed three sides of the wall, isn't it? You should have completed three sides of the wall. And what is the value of those three sides? 30,000. Because each side is 10,000, isn't it? So the planned value at the end of week three will be 30,000. And what I'm interested to know is what is the actual cost? The actual cost is the actual money you spend which should be available in your project, which is this. That is 20,000, 30,000, and 32,000. Okay. Alright. Now, we will be using the same example throughout the rest of the session. So, I would recommend you to uh, have some kind of notes or some papers and you can start doing calculation with me. Because we will be discussing roughly about 13 formulas. Uh, in cost control, some you know, some really good formulas and not complex formulas, simple formulas, but we'll use the same data. Right now, if I don't show this to you, if I don't show the progress to you, if I don't show this progress to you, and if I ask you how the project is performing, good or bad, your answer should be cannot tell. We don't have enough information. Tell. Why we don't have enough information? Tell because we don't know what is the progress in terms. Of complete three sides of the compound wall, isn't it? 
the plan says I should complete three sites of the compound for which I budgeted 30,000. But actually, I spent 32,000. But what is not available here is how much work I, I completed. Or in other words, how many sites of the compound wall I completed. Again, hypothetically, let's say you completed all four sites or even three and off site. That means your project performance is really good, isn't it? So what is very important is how much you earned. Or in other words, or in other words, what is the budgeted cost of the work what you had performed? What is the budgeted cost of the work what you had performed? Okay. For example, you completed three sites of the compound wall as of today, which means your earn value will be 30,000. Let's say you completed only two sites of the compound wall, which means your earn value will be 20,000. Right? Now keep it in mind, very important. When you calculate earn value, do not look at the actual cost. Do not look at the actual cost. It, it's of no relevance. Okay. It is of no relevance. Okay. All right. Now, I want to find the progress now. And here are the progress. Okay. Wall 1, I completed 100%. Wall 2, I completed 100%. Wall 3, I completed only 50%. How much money I spend? Irrelevant. Don't even, don't even think about it when you're calculating the earned value. Okay. Now, wall 1, I completed 100. Wall 2, 100. Wall 3, 50%. The formula to calculate earned value is percentage completed multiplied by the budget okay the budget is already known isn't it because each side the budget is 10,000 right each wall is 10,000 10,000 okay so what's the formula person complete multiplied by the budget you, either you can say person complete or you can say progress okay now the person complete for work package one is or wall one is 100 percent so the earned value is 10,000 that's the same goes for wall two 10,000 but if you look at wall three you finish only 50%, which means only 50% of the budget, 50% of 10,000 is 5,000. So in this case, the earned value is 25,000. So we get 25,000 here. Right. Now we can make the comparison. Okay. Now we can make the comparison. All right. Because the value of the work, what you completed is 25,000, but you spent 32,000. So straight away, you spent 7,000 more than what you had accomplished number one number two you completed twenty five thousand dollar of work but you're supposed to complete thirty thousand dollar of work which means what you are behind the schedule that we should know already because at the end of week three
see it one more time. Just hold on.